I'm pretty loud as it is, so I really don't need the mic except for the recording part. So I'll try to dial it back a little bit. All right, uh, I'm, I'm Rob Jorgensen. I actually do have a bio. Uh, I've been working in technology and uh, InfoSec for about 20 years in Utah. Uh, I left uh, industry about two years ago to work in academia where I've been uh, building a cybersecurity program. So, uh, and this talk is InfoSec just doing it. Notice it's not just do it, so I'm not infringing on Nike's trademark. Uh, so the way this talk came about was with uh, my role, I get asked by a lot of people how you get into cybersecurity, how you get into InfoSec, uh, you know, what can you do? I have a lot of people who are students who don't really have any experience, but I also have a lot, talk to a lot of people who are system engineers, uh, you know, system administrators, network administrators who say, I really want to be in security, but my, you know, my company won't support me. You know, I don't know what to do. Uh, and, and a lot of people uh, basically are like, I can't afford it because everyone thinks that if you want to be an InfoSec, you've got to go take a $5,000 SANS course. Is anyone here taking a SANS course? Was it good? Yeah, great courses, but expensive, right? Uh, so this is so this this comes up a lot, and one of the things I I say is, well, you, you know, there are things you can do, and one of the big things is setting up a virtual lab, and that's kind of where this started out with. But then I realized that that wasn't really the place to start. So the question is, why are we going to set up the labs, and where to start? And so one of the big questions is. Do you actually want to work in InfoSec? Does everyone here want to work in InfoSec, for cybersecurity? Anyone not sure? Uh, this is a question because some people, they want to you know, hack, they want to tinker, they want to get into various things, but they may not actually want to do it as a job. And then the question is, do you actually like doing InfoSec or do you like the idea of doing InfoSec? Does everyone re recognize that distinction? It's like, who, who here wants to be a pen tester or a hacker? Anybody? Who here likes writing 30 hours of reports? Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> he's, he's got a good beard, though. We need to get that on camera. Uh, so let, let's kind of zoom out a little bit. So to the general public, what do we do? Right? If you're trying to explain to your grandparents or you're talking about somebody who's looking at jobs in the scope of all the jobs in the world, right? Construction workers and, and airline pilots and marine biologists, what do you say? Yeah. Try to teach that log on data from computer. Some people say that. How many people just say I work with computers or I do computer stuff? For, for those watching online, that was pretty much all the hands, right? <laughs> But like, if, if I say, hey, what do you do? And you said, I do computer stuff. Is that gonna be a good enough answer for me? No, because we kind of zoom in on things when we know about them. So you know, if I say, hey, what do you do? You say, oh, I work in computers. I'm like, oh yeah, what, what kind of computers? You're like, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an IT person. Oh, what kind of IT person? Oh, I'm a, you know, I'm a sysadmin. Oh, what kind of sysadmin? Oh, I'm a Linux sysadmin. Like, well, you like CentOS, you like Fedora, oh, no, you know. And so it kind of gets deeper and deeper in. And it's the same thing with security. A lot of people think, oh, you know, there's a security job, right? And that's like saying there's a DBA job. Okay, are all DBAs the same? Yes, no, no, right? So there's weirdo Oracle DBAs and then there's everyone else. Uh, I'm just kidding, they're all weird. Um, <laughs> so with security people, it can't be just like, oh, I want to be a security person. And so one of the questions is, what do you want to do in security? Uh, you know, do you want to be a pen tester? Do you want to write, write firewall rules? Do you want to you know, do things with snort? So the really question is, you know, what's your passion? What moves you? you know, what, are, what are you really interested in? Uh, you know, what makes you want to learn more? And what gives you a rush? Does anyone ever get that rush when they're working on something and they, they figure it out, they're, they're you know, popping a box or they're writing a query or you know, they're getting some code to work and suddenly it's like, oh, you know, everything works and angels sing, right? And that's a good feeling, right? If you never get that, maybe this isn't the thing for you. Okay? If you're just like, uh, all right, I, I guess it worked. 
time to go punch the clock. It's going to be a really, really long, uh, you know, uh, career, I guess. So, and the thing is, what wows you? Do you ever read about something and go, that's awesome, I want to do that? Okay. Yeah. You have an example? Uh, not up here. Okay. Nice. Do, do you like to break things? Sweet. All right. So, so with this, I, I want to have a little bit more of an open dialogue, even though it's going to be weird for people watching it. I kind of want to embrace that B-sides discussion concept rather than just me up here ta talking. Does anyone else have anything that wows them, that gets them excited? I'm talking to you, Dr. Unicorn. You gave a talk on one, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's, there's Jeff in the back who likes malware. We'll talk about Jeff a little more uh, later. But one of the things I get is I say, what wows you? What do you want to do with cybersecurity? And this is the answer I get. <laughs> Anything, I don't care. I just want to be an infosec. This is how you end up, you know, tweaking snort rules for the next, you know, three years. Or something awful. I mean, people who do say that end up in a situation like this. Yeah, some people have no idea what that is. Does anyone have no idea what that is? Find somebody old, Jeff, and have them tell you. <laughs> Get off my lawn, kid. Oh, who let that guy in? When's your talk? What time? Okay. I'll, I'll be there to heckle you. And I'm bringing friends. All right, so, so one of the questions is, what can you do to find that passion? And, uh, you know, I, I, instead of blanking the screen, I jumped ahead a slide. What do you guys think? What do you do to find that? Read a lot. What do you read? What else? RFCs? RFC 1918? Which is the RFC for the pigeon-based IP? That's not, not 1918, but. What else? YouTube. YouTube, okay, good. A anyone else? DC801? So, so how many of you have a passion in InfoSec or to do something in cybersecurity? What is it? I mean, before I asked if anyone had a passion, when I was actually calling on people and no one raised their hand. Anyone want to share anything? God, yes. Okay, great. So you like blue team stuff. Fantastic. How did you get into that? Um, there are intrusion analyst jobs around the valley that are entry level intern type jobs. Mm -hmm. But how, 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 did, how did that grab you personally? How did that grab me personally? It was a niche. There was stuff going on that we didn't understand from years ago. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing it, so I started trying to figure it out. Okay, good. A anyone else? Great audience participation at the end of the day. <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to you. Ethan in the back. So, so you like to watch. Uh, 
So, uh, you like, and how did you get into that, Ethan? Way in the back. Okay. Good. So, one of the things is, is, is there anyone who doesn't have a passion yet or is just kind of exploring? Everybody knows what they want to do. Sweet. That goes like 12 sl slides. We'll just jump ahead. I know. So uh, I don't need my slides, apparently. Uh, all right. So, so some of the way, ways to find that or, or to embrace that is reading, right? Some of these things came up. Twitter, Hacker News, uh, Reddit, NetSec, uh, blogs like Naked Security, Tripwire, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, if you really don't know what you're looking for, if you're looking for a change, you know, read these, take a look at these, and see kind of, you know, what things, you know, grab your attention, okay? Does anyone else have any favorite feeds? Security Now? Security now? Data Loss TV. Data Loss TV? Mm-hmm. Right. Verizon Data Breach Incident Report, anybody? Every summer that comes out, you read it, really excited. I skipped you. What else did you have to say? I like programming. Like programming? So I like programming tools mm -hmm. to use to um, do the network. Okay. And then I like the documentation. Ooh. Yikes. You got a guy who writes reports over here and a guy who likes documentation. <laughs> the only two in Utah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's the only thing I write is self-documenting code, so. Um, so. So read, listen. There are lots of great podcasts out there, lots of good information. Uh, everyone listen to Security Weekly? Anyone listen to Security Weekly? Yeah, used to be Paul.com, changed to Security Weekly about a year ago. Um, uh, Risky Business, uh, Patrick down in Australia does a good one. There's more, these podcasts one advantage with the podcast and listening is it's something you can do while you're doing something else, right? You're driving, you're commuting, you're riding the bus. Uh, but they talk about all kinds of different topics. They're not narrowly focused. So, things to watch. Uh, YouTube DEF CON channel. Does anyone, everyone check that out? Yeah? How about irongeek.com? Is there anyone who doesn't know about irongeek.com? All right, uh, so who, who's been there? Yes, what, what does Iron Geek have? It's Adrian Crenshaw's website. Talks. Adrian uh, records hundreds of talks. Uh, I, can't, I can't even begin to uh, describe the, you know, the, the number there, um, but it seems like almost all the smaller regional conferences, GERCON, DerbyCon, a lot of the B-Sides conferences, he records and he puts them up there. So you have the opportunity to go watch all these great talks without traveling. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, that's a, that, that's a great site uh, to uh, find information. Anyone have any others? Yeah. Black Hat has a YouTube as well. Good. Uh, RSA also puts up some of their stuff if you're uh, into the RSA talks. Yeah. Okay, the next step in kind of figuring that out is talking. Finding the local groups, okay? How many here are part of some kind of local group? Be it a DEF CON group, OWASP, ISOC, IC squared. This is where you really can find a lot of people who have similar passions and explore new things. Uh, several of the speakers here are from DC801. Uh, and they're talking about all kinds of topics from debugging to hardware attacks to uh, penetration testing to uh, malware, reverse engineering. Uh, what else? Anyone? Anyone else from DC801 here? Remembers all the talks? It's a bunch of talks. So DC801 is a local DEF CON group. There are I have no idea how many members. Does anyone know? Official members. Where, 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 where's Metacortex when I need them? So, so or NEMAs, yeah. 
So the, the DEF CON groups are, are great. Um, you know, for, for people in Salt Lake uh, in Utah, there's DC801. DC801 has a hacker space uh, in downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, it's a pretty nice hacker space, uh, and they have meetings, what, about three times a week um, on a variety of topics. A bunch of them are free and open to the public. Uh, some of them are for members only, but these are people with similar passion and interests uh, who, who, you know, want to talk about these things. Uh, there's also OWASP, uh, ISACA, but a big thing is attending conferences like this one. So, well done, you guys can check conferences off. Um, but one of the things I wanted to mention with uh, conferences are the important thing is not just to attend the talks. I mean, that's a lot of the reason we have these conferences is because people want to attend the talks, but what we call hallway con is often much, much more valuable. Yes, Dustin, you've got something to add? Okay. What's that? Yeah, no problem. That's uh, Dustin Larson. I'd like to introduce everyone. I, I told him I'd give him a shout out. Um, so, what is hallway con? Can anyone describe that? Networking, okay, anyone else? This is the worst part about the last slot of the day. Everyone's dead tired and just wants to be done. And my students who are here just here for extra credit, you know, uh, want to check out. But thank you. Uh, all right, hallway con. So talking to people, because that's one of the things, especially as uh, geeks, a lot of us are introverts, right? Like me, I'm obviously very introverted and shy, as my bio said. Um, but this is a chance to talk to people with like interests who you know, may not, uh, you know, are not people you may not work with, um, you know, and they're not going to be like, oh, you're a geek, I don't know anything about that. So uh, hallway con is actually the best part of any conference. In fact, um, I would rather usually chat in the halls with people than go to the talks. Um, that, that's especially uh, uh, the case at a big conference like DEF CON. Has anyone been to DEF CON? How, how easy is it to get into a talk at DEF CON? Yeah. You get a lot of hallway con just because you're in the hallway for like two hours trying to get into the talk. Um, I do recommend going to DEF CON though. Is there anyone who has not been to DEF CON here? Wow, a lot of people. Uh, so. Is there anyone who doesn't know what DEF CON is? Okay, so DEF CON is not for everybody. Uh, is that an understatement? Uh, it's not for everybody, but uh, it's really eye-opening to go to. In fact, I, I worked with a, a guy who went to DEF CON a couple of years ago, well, it's more than a couple of years now, and uh, you know, I said, well, so what'd you think of your first DEF CON? He's like, I guess it's good to see what those people do. Right. And, uh, and it, it, you know, he kind of you know, had a little sneer, and he's like, I don't, you know, like, I don't like those people. Um, what he doesn't realize is some of those people are his coworkers. Um, and, and while there's a lot of black t-shirts and mohawks, there's a lot of good information there, and you're going to get exposed to things that you normally wouldn't see. Uh, the downside is it's huge and chaotic and hot, and, uh, you know, it, it's DEF CON. But I'd recommend anyone from Utah especially go. Why from Utah? The DC801 party. Uh, well, there is that, yes. It's what? Driving distance. So there are people who come from around the world to go to DEF CON. Uh, people who drive across the country, fly in from Asia, whatever. For us, it's, it's an hour and a half flight or you know, a five and a half hour drive. It's also a cheap conference, right? How much does it cost to get into DEF CON? 220, so about $200. Does anyone know what it costs to get into Black Hat? $1,700, RSA is about the same. Um, most of the bigger conferences are pretty expensive. DEF CON, 200 bucks, not too much. Um, you know, that may not be something your employer would be willing to pick up, but often you can work on something like saying, well, how about I go and don't use vacation time? Has anyone ever pulled that one? Yeah. So it's not very expensive. And then you can stay in Vegas for very little money. Uh, I'm looking at RSA right now, and 
RSA, you stay in down for, town San Francisco, and if you buy your hotel room six months in advance, you know, it's like $200 a night. Vegas, you can stay for how much? Fifty, sixty, yeah. Vegas is pretty cheap. The other thing is you can eat cheaply in Vegas, especially if you drive down there. You know, you stop at the, you know, stop at Costco in St. George, buy, you know, some cereal and milk, and it makes it a, it makes it an easy one to go to. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot of good regional conferences though uh, to go to. Uh, B sides, uh, there's B sides Vegas, which if you're going to Defcon, you might as well go to B sides Vegas. Uh, Besides Salt Lake City, obviously. Uh, Saint Con, has anyone been to Saint Con? Quite a few of you. Uh, that's usually in the fall. Uh, there's also some security stuff at Open West, which is April, May? Does anyone know when Open? First of May. Yeah. Um, so we've got some good conferences around here, but there's also some smaller conferences that are really great because one of the things about a great big conference like DEF CON is, well, who goes to DEF CON? Who else goes? You know, the, the, the 40 people in this room and 15,000 of your closest friends, right? So it's absolute chaos. Uh, it's very hard to, to, you know, hook up with people to, to, to visit. Uh, there's one, one guy that uh, I've been exchanging email with and, and messages on Twitter for, you know, quite a while. And, and I'm like, hey, we should totally meet up at DEF CON. And with all the chaos and all that, we basically got a handshake in passing, you know, in the four days because there's just so many things booked up. Um, so the downside to that, so the upside is everybody's at DEF CON. The downside is everybody's at DEF CON. But there's these smaller cons you can go to. Uh, GERCON, has anyone heard of GERCON? No, it, oh, you have? Where, where's GERCON? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Where is that? I don't know, Michigan someplace. A good con. How about DerbyCon? Has anyone been to DerbyCon? DerbyCon is fantastic. Um, so, the, you know, there's, there's conferences in, in Colorado, but these smaller conferences are great because usually there's not as many people. Uh, you know, the speaker quality varies a lot, and, uh, you know, they're, they're worth going to. Uh, one thing I want to mention with attending the conferences and watching these talks um, is a lot of times the topic when you're trying to figure out what you're looking for can be colored by the speaker, right? There are some really, really good speakers who can make really, really boring topics super interesting. There are some really terrible speakers that could take an awesome topic and make it just incredibly arduous to watch. So that's a good reason to sample a lot of them. And the advantage of grabbing these talks off YouTube or irongeek.com is you get to check out a lot of them. Uh, those of you who've gone to DEF CON and you know, waited in line for half an hour, an hour, and then you go into a talk and the guy spends you know, 15 minutes and then says, thank you, any questions? And then walks out, or actually B-sides last year. Uh, we won't call out that person, Danny. Um, Okay, so when, when you find these things, what do you do? You find what grabs you, and you can, you know, you can dive in, you can dip your toe in. That's one of the great things is that there's so much uh, information out there that if you want to dive into it, you really can. And I'm going to pick on, on Jeff for a second. Jeff, can I pick on you? So a, a couple of years ago, Jeff uh, was like, I want... <laughs> Nice. Uh, I, I checked mine just before I came in, so super professional there, room monitor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> take away your volunteer shirt. Uh, so a couple years ago, Jeff says, says I want to learn malware and uh, analysis and reverse engineering. Uh, and he was really into it. He saw some talks at DEF CON. And what did you do, Jeff? Start playing malware at home. You got the great... Uh, Malware book from No Starch, that the name is totally escaping me. Sorry, No Starch, one of our sponsors. Practical malware analysis. Ed, what do you do now? He's a malware analyst. Jeff fully dove in to malware. He's like, hey, this malware stuff is pretty cool, and he just did it. The other thing is, you can't dip your toes into this. You don't have to fully commit. 
you can be like, eh, I want to try a little malware analysis. And the nice thing is, is that you can go, you know, kind of back and forth uh, depending on what you want to do. So, does that solve everyone's problems? Yes? Sweet. Thanks, buddy. So, now we're doing it again, but with feeling, right? So, it's, it's not just enough to read something once or watch something once, right? Hopefully what this is doing is this is kindling something inside of you and you're saying, you know what, I really like malware analysis or I really like IDS or I really like breaking stuff or, or whatever it is. And so you dig in deeper, right? You read, you find some books on the topic. You can check out OpenCourseWare. Is everyone familiar with OpenCourseWare? Is anyone familiar with OpenCourseWare? Few of you. So there are, so you've got MOOCs, right? And I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but one of the things that you had before that was you had a lot of schools who were pre, uh, opening up their courseware. You know, you've got open software, right, that anyone can access. Some schools do open courseware. Um, does anyone know who Ron Rivest is? Who's Ron Rivest? Yeah. Right. He, he's the R in RSA, right? Would anyone think it'd be cool to take a security class from Ron Rivest? You know, does anyone know who he's affiliated with? Uh, MIT. Um, they're they're kind of like slick, but in Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> uh, so they have Ron Rivest security course up on their website on the MIT Open Courseware site. We can go up there and download lectures and assignments from what, you know, one of the leading uh, cryptographers out there doing research. They have tons and tons of courses. Some of them just have a, you know, some slides and some assignments. Some of them have everything. But you know, this is a source where you can go find that information. Um, you know, some people don't do well with just reading or watching videos. Some people like a structured course. And so that's you know, definitely an option for that. Uh, that brings up uh, MOOCs. Does anyone know what a MOOC is? Does anyone know what an MMORPG is? <laughs> Strange people walking into the back to answer that question. Thank you. Um, so, a MOOC is a, a massive online uh, open course, right? So, uh, Coursera, is anyone familiar with Coursera? Or edX? These are our online things where uh, schools such as Stanford, uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, Berkeley, uh, lots and lots of schools, have come together and put entire courses online that you can take for free. Uh, there's, you know, cryptography courses. Has anyone tried the Stanford cryptography course? What'd you guys think? Rough? Yeah, it's pretty brutal, right? You're like, oh yeah, I, I know crypto. And then you jump into that, you're like, holy crap, right? And then there's, there's a Crypto 2 out, by the way, for those of you who got through Crypto 1. How many got through Crypto 1? Nobody, uh, but it's uh, Dan Bona, B Boehner's course, um, Boner, I, I don't know how to say his last name, Bona, um, uh, but it's, it's a really cool course and it dives into a lot of theory and the mathematics behind crypto, uh, but there's courses out there on all kinds of things, risk analysis, ethical hacking, you know, pen testing, web app security, uh, all kinds of app sec, as well as other things. Um, and one thing that I don't have up here that is really important is they also have courses on speaking, writing, things like that, because one of the things I run into a lot uh, when I'm talking to employers is they're like, this guy's really good at technical stuff, but he can't write. I'm like this gentleman over here who likes to write documentation for fun. So that, that, that's something you could work on with that, because basically if you can't communicate the technical ideas, it doesn't matter how good you are. Um, What's that? What was, was that actually a comment or was that just like someone saying, where are we eating dinner in 21 minutes when this talk is over? Um, I don't. Uh, so uh, one of the other things, more talks. Hopefully that you've found uh, you know, something that interests you, you can go find more talks. Almost any topic you find, someone's giving a talk on. Um, 
you know, you dive in. Uh, there's more sources for that. You can dive deeper. Uh, you can get Black Hat DVDs. Uh, you know, there's tons of conferences like GERCON that you haven't heard uh, of a lot of things. And that gets back into talk again, right? So collaborating with others. This is big, right? Does anyone here work with anybody on something not necessarily for their job, but just something they're interested in? Projects, you people, right? How has that been for you? This is the interactive part, you can talk. Great. Ethan, do you have any comment? Yeah, it, it, you, you can really, you know, push each other and, and uh, you know, go deeper, but it also ha has the, kind of the effect of you help each other, right? And plus, you know, for those of us who are a little competitive, you kind of don't want to be the worst guy on the team, right? Um, the other thing with talk is to give a talk. Who here has presented at a conference before? Was it a good experience? How did you feel about the topic you had? Be, like before and after? Any difference? No difference. Was it an awful experience and you're never doing it again? Well, this is awkward. Um, <laughs> note for next time, take present a talk off. <laughs> and maybe not present anymore. Um, no, so when you, when you put together your talk, did, it, did you learn anything more? Did it make you think about some things? Uh, you know, it's different to, you know, just kind of doing something by yourself versus actually having to stand up and, you know, have slides or not have slides and, and do a demo, right? right? Has anyone done a live demo on a talk? How'd that go? Good, good man, yeah. <laughs> The, the demo gods are never in your favor. Um, but yeah, so you, the idea with the talk is that you go a little further, right? You dig a little deeper uh, and, and you want to be competent. You don't want to get up here and look like an idiot, um, as this example seems to show. So, okay. But one of the things we get into is, I don't understand what we're talking about, right? The, I'm not that, that ready. Um, you know, I don't know X. Does anyone run into that? Like, hey, I want to do this, but I have no idea how to do it, where to start. So my suggestion is that you play. That's one of the great things is that with this, you can mess around with it. Like, for example, if you guys want to do malware analysis, what would you do? Right now, anybody? Go download malware. <laughs> um, you, you, you can, in fact, download malware. Uh, download malware, question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. Um, and then what would you do after you download your malware? Okay, good, good. Um, this is the stuff you should enjoy, right? You should be like excited to get malware, not necessarily on your production box. But you should be like, yeah, awesome, I found the malware, or I, I trigger this alarm, or I pop this box. Something should grab your attention, okay? And I've got some suggestions on, on how to, how to uh, some basic things that can kind of help you um, with that. One of them is learn Wireshark. Who here uses Wireshark? Who here thinks it's really, really useful in their job? Who here's like, eh, I really don't need Wireshark and it's never helped me? Okay, just checking. Um, if, you're, if you're, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm a purist, I'll only use TCP dump, then that's fine, you're hardcore. You probably use like Vim or something too. Um, <laughs> who's giving the Vim talk? Are you the Vim talk guy? <laughs> wow. Good for you. I'm a nano guy, I'm lazy. Uh, which brings us to the next thing, learn Linux. Um, this was a text I got uh, a couple of years ago from someone in this room. Uh, I'm not going to point out who it was, uh, unless he wants to out himself. So, 
You got, he's not going to do it? Okay, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not saying he's in the second row on the right or anything. Um, so, does, it, does anyone see what the problem is with this? I'll, I'll read it for those in the back. The message I got was apparently tar dash cvf star file dot tar hoses the first file in the directory. Oops. And my sympathetic reply was ha 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 ha. And then I point out the first arg after the f is the file name of the new tad all because autocorrects for what the win. And then or tarball. And this was information that would have been useful two hours ago. So what happened? Does anyone know what that command will do? <laughs> what does that command do? <laughs> Notice I'll call out Dustin Larson, but I'm not going to call out your name on the video. <laughs> right, so, so, so it expands out that and then tries to put everything in the first file name and expands because the dash f is what the file is going to be. So it basically takes all the files and dumps them into the first file, which is really bad if this is, you know, has crypto information for a hardware security module. Um, now that that's what happened. So <laughs> learning, <laughs> yeah, it's not the only box that's been whacked um, uh, by someone who doesn't know Linux. Who here is good with Linux? Who wishes they were better, right? Who, who messes with Linux a lot with, with their security job? Right? You do a lot with Linux, okay? Uh, I mean, you just need to learn Linux. So many tools run on Linux. Uh, if you don't need to figure out how to do something, it will save you so much time, right? I mean, I had somebody who, who asked me the other day, it's like, how do I get an MD5 for a bunch of files, or for a bunch of entries in a file? Anyone know how to do that? MD5 sum, right? Which comes into learn to automate, right? Scripting is your friend. When you're learning these things, you should learn how to script in some language. Does anyone have a favorite scripting language? Bash, Python, PowerShell. PowerShell is actually pretty awesome these days. So, I mean, it was kind of a joke, right? Ha ha. But once you get to like PowerShell 4, it gets pretty awesome. Power split, yeah. Uh, and PS exec is also pretty useful on the uh, pen testing side. So, so thanks, Microsoft. That was a double-edged sword. Um, so learn to script, learn to automate. There are so many cool things you can do at the command line. Uh, uh, you know, at, uh, for, you know, for Linux, you can also do cool things with uh, PowerShell. But learn how to automate these tasks. A lot of the things we do are repetitive, and you don't want to, you know have to type it in over and over again. Um, there are tons of tutorials. If you look for bash scripting tutorial or Python scripting or anything, there's tons of cool things. And it becomes useful even at lower levels. Like, does anyone use Scapy for anything? Does anyone know what Scapy is? What's Scapy? Uh, it is a Python crafting module for packets. Yeah, it's a packet crafting module. It lets you do really, really granular things with packets uh, through Python. Uh, another recommendation, learn a debugger, right? You don't necessarily need to be able to do you know, a lot of stuff, but if you have some idea of what debugging looks like, it makes a lot more sense, right? Like you see, you're looking at a trace and you see a, a lot of nine zeros in it, right? In hex, nine zero. Anybody? Anybody? Nops, right? Yeah. So you know, you know what those things are. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. Uh, I mentioned it later, but CoreLand.be has tons of great tutorials. Uh, has anyone been out to the CoreLand uh, site? Good. Um, next big one: Learn Tracer T. Uh, if that slide didn't make you laugh, go back to the talk step and ask somebody. Notice I didn't say somebody old this time. Um, uh, tracer T, <laughs> uh, Tracer T, right? What? 
it, don't say that. Well, it's Tracer T. It, it shows you everyone's connection to Google. <laughs> Still, what we need to do is just play the Tracer T video for an hour. Yeah. Next thing, find some challenges. Challenge yourself, right? Make a game out of it. Is anyone familiar with the term gamification? Turning stuff into a game. It, and I mean, at the, you know, I feel bad saying this, but it's something I use with my kids all the time, right? Let's see who can stay quiet the longest. Or let's see who can put away their toys the fastest, right? You turn things into a game and suddenly it's fun, right? Uh, it's also kind of manipulative, but. Uh, but there are tons of challenges out there. There's lots of online CTFs. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of conferences and contests have archives of things to do. Y you know, if, you're, if you want to find something, uh, a great place to start is someplace where someone has actually put something to find. Does that make sense? So, so you go out there, you know, capture the packet people. You can go up and get their network captures and look through them. And they've got years of archives up there. Uh, DC3.bil was supposed to release their forensic challenges. Uh, they haven't so far, um, but they should have that as well. So now we're to where I was starting with this. Build that lab, right? Virtual machines are your friends. Is there anyone who doesn't know how to use virtualization in here? Fantastic. Virtualization is pretty awesome for this stuff. Why? Isolation? What else? Cost, yeah. You don't have to own it, right? It's not like, you know, 15 years ago where if you wanted to have a Linux box and a Windows box and a client and all that, you needed to have, you know, five different desktops and you had all these crappy P2s and P3s that you'd cobbled together to try to do a network. No, you can have, you know, this MacBook has 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, you know, I, I have another laptop that's got 32 gigs of RAM. I can put lots and lots of machines on there. And the best part about the VMs is that when I mess them up, which you invariably will when you're playing, what do you do? Revert to snapshot, right? Uh, so, yeah, if, if you're not using virtual machines, you're doing it wrong. So, where do we get VMs? AWS. AWS? Sure, if you, if you want to pay for it. Some of us are made of money, apparently. <laughs> 14 cents an hour, where am I going to get that kind of money? What's that? VirtualBox, VirtualBox. VMware Workstation, there's plenty of things out there. Um, Hyper-V, I guess. One of the problems is, though, so what about Windows VMs? Can you get Windows VMs anywhere? Sure. No? No? How about legit Windows VMs? We'll get in there. Modern.ie. Has anyone heard of this website? What, what is it? Right, it's, for, it's from Microsoft. It's designed for web developers to test their, their stuff. But what versions of Windows does it have up there? All of them, well, not all of them. I mean, it's not like it's got 3.11. And you've got to use like, you know, I'm trying to think of a browser from then, but there's like, you know, NCSA Mosaic 1.0. Um, it does not have that. But it goes all the way back to XP, right? If for some reason you want a Windows XP machine with IE6, you can just go download it from there. It's a time bomb demo, but on the uh, desktop, it actually has the instructions on how to rearm it. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, for a while, it was not patched, and you could just, you know, pop it with MSO uh, 08067 if you wanted to look cool. Sometime around November, they fixed that because they wanted to make my demo fail. Um, but you can remove one security um, patch, and, it, and it's vulnerable again. Uh, there's Windows XP, Windows 7, uh, uh, there's Vista, in case you want to test your website against the seven people who are still running that. Um, there's, there's Windows 10 is out there with like every flavor of IE and you can just download them. They're all time bomb, but they're legitimate versions you can test your web app with, right? My web app happens to be Metasploit sometimes. Um, so that's a good place. I mean, you can actually get those. That's always been a challenge is getting 
Windows uh, VMs. Now Microsoft is giving them to us. Uh, Kali Linux, does anyone not know what Kali Linux is? Okay, good. Uh, you know, Metasploitable, uh, uh, I don't even know what DVM is, that should be DVL. Um, good job on the slides, Rob. Um, other Linux distros, you can put damn vulnerable uh, a web app on it, damn vulnerable Linux, you can grab, you know, things like that. Um, you can build these. There's a lot of tutorials out there. Uh, Metasploit Unleashed, has everyone done Metasploit Unleashed? Has anyone done Metasploit Unleashed? A couple of people. Uh, so, uh, offensive security, the people who uh, do uh, Kali Linux have a, uh, a web tutorial out there called Metasploit Unleashed that runs you through reconnaissance, fuzzing, scanning, exploitation, the whole thing just for free up there. Uh, if you want to uh, try uh, some uh, reverse engineering, debugging, that sort of stuff, uh, exploits, uh, CoreLAN has some uh, really great tutorials up there. And then YouTube. YouTube has a lot of uh, uh, demos up there. So, uh, for the end, is what you need to do, you just go out there and do it, right? All the tools you need are out there. So, you know, go read, go listen, go watch, go talk, and then repeat as necessary. So, does anyone have any questions? Comments? Funny jokes? Bless you. All right, that's it. Thank you.